as I've been going around this summer talking to people about it, they have been asking me for a pronunciation guide. So I figured I'd make a very quick video with a pronunciation guide for some of the main names and phrases that are used within the book. channel actually this is kind of a welcome back to my channel for myself as well because I've been away for most of the summer and one of the main reasons is because my debut novel Wicked Fox came out with Putnam Books for Young Readers at Penguin Random House and I'm so excited about it. I was also doing a lot of book events for this as well as finishing up stuff for book two which comes out next year which is just really wild to think about so we won't think about that right now. But for anyone who's new to my channel or did not know that I wrote a book, I am Kat Cho. I am a young adult author. My debut novel is Wicked Fox. It is based on Korean mythology of the Kumiho which is a nine-tailed fox who turns into a beautiful woman so she can lure in men and devour their energy so she can live forever. And it is set in modern day Seoul. It's super duper fun or at least I had a lot of fun writing it. And as I've been going around this summer talking to people about it, they have been asking me for a pronunciation guide. So I figured I'd make a very quick video with a pronunciation guide for some of the main names and phrases that are used within the book. Now, if you haven't read the book yet, it is based in modern day Seoul and because it's based in Seoul I use a lot of Korean words in it. There are just some Korean words that don't have a one-to-one -one translation into English where it has the same spirit of the word. So I used the Korean word, it just felt way more authentic to me that way. So let's start off with the main word which is gumiho, which I already did say, but gumiho is the word for a nine-tailed fox in Korean mythology. So then there is another mythical creature in here, it's called the dokebi. So the dokebi is a Korean goblin. Now in Korea, goblins are very different than goblins in America. We're not talking about the Gringotts kind that like has lots of gold and things like that, although goblins in Korean culture also do love money. However, they are more like a hulking creature that's like big, like like, like more like a, tr a troll in Western culture. Now there is a type of dokebi that shows up in my book. It's called a chonggak dokebi. Now that dokebi is a bachelor dokebi. And that means that he is beautiful because he is made for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is love. So now on to the names. So in Korean culture, we say the last name first, the family name. So Gu Miyang. Gu is her family name. Miyang is her given name. Gu Miyang is my main character. She is a Gumiho, and she is a teenager who, like, kind of just makes a lot of mistakes because she believes she exists between two worlds, between the world of the Gumiho and between the world, human world. And she, a part of her, wants to be part of both worlds, but she just doesn't believe that that's possible. The other character is An Ji Hoon. He is my main boy character. He loves video games. He loves naps. Thing. He loves not taking anything seriously and eventually he loves Miyoung. So uh, he has two friends that Yi So Min. The other best friend is named Oh Chang Wan. The next character is Song Nara. The next character that we will run into is Gu Yana. She is a Gumiho that we will run into as Miyoung's mother. She has lived for hundreds of years and has very set rules on how to live your life as a Gumiho. Okay, so now I'm using the glossary that actually exists in the back of my book. My editor asked me to write a glossary with some definitions, but we don't have the pronunciation. So I'm just going to go through it and say some of the words that um, we use a lot within the book. So um, I use the word ajushi a lot. So one of the characters, Jihoon actually calls him ajushi instead of his formal title. And ajushi pretty much just means a middle-aged man. The female equivalent of it is ajima. Then we also have harmony. So harmony is our word for grandmother. Another word we run across is amma, which is the shortened word for ammani. So ammani means mother and amma means mommy or mom. And then the, the father equivalent is abuji for father and appa for dad. Another thing we say a lot in the book is gi. So gi is 
similar to ki or chi in other cultures, ki is just the Korean way of saying it and it's literally a person's energy. Another word that comes up a lot is bujok. So a bujok is the talismans, the ones that come on the yellow or gold paper with the red writing on it. Those are often used in a lot of um, religions within Korea, shamanism being one of them. So uh, the bujoks show up in my book. They have both symbolic meaning as well as magical meanings within the book and they're used to kind of ward off evil spirits and evil energy and things like that by the shamans. And the final things that are in the book that I'm going to pronounce just because it's so fun is all of the food. And I will say that at the end of the day, I am most fluent in Korean food <laughs> than in anything else. So they have kimchi, which is the um, pickled uh, fermented cabbage. Although there's other kinds of kimchi, but cabbage is the most common kind. Then there is kimchi jjigae. So lots of jjigae is in the book, which is the types of, which is stews. Kimchi jjigae, tenjang jjigae. There's jajangmyeon, which is a black bean noodle, like a black bean paste noodle. There's jampong, which is like a spicy seafood stew. There's kalbitang, which is one of my favorite dishes. And kalbitang is like a rib stew, like a beef rib stew. There is also solongtang. Now, I don't know if they actually eat solongtang in the book, but it is referenced in the very first Juhun scene when he is talking about the oxtail soup. Oxtail broth is what Salang Tang is made out of. So it's very delicious. I would definitely suggest getting that as well. At this point, I'm just like naming Korean foods. I don't even know if I talk about all of these. Chapche, I do talk about chapche in the book, and that is the glass noodles that is oftentimes served as a side dish. Um, there's ojingol. It's like a dried squid that still has like the shape of it, and you like, people love to like just rip off the legs and eat it like kind of <laughs> like jerky. I think that's pretty much it for the book. So I'm editing this video right now and I realized that I didn't pronounce one of the most important objects in the book, which is the Yawu Gusel, which is Myung's fox bead that she loses at the beginning of the book and spends the whole time trying to get back. So yes, Yawu Gusel, the fox bead. I, there's a lot of other words that I'm not pronouncing right now because this video should not be that long. Oh my god, it's all, so long already. This just shows that I haven't filmed a video in a really long time because Honestly, I am not getting to the point really fast, am I? But I missed all of you guys. I am definitely going to start filming a lot of videos more here on this channel about my writing journey, about publishing, about my author life, vlogs, anything you want. Definitely say in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, then I'd really appreciate a thumbs up or a subscription to my channel, and I will see everybody next time. Bye!